uh, Paris Le Bourget Airport and uh, Ventry Airport, which is used by some budget airlines. There are some public holidays you should be aware of when you visit France because things may be shut. The New Year's Day, Easter Monday, Labour Day, which is the 1st of May, Victory in Europe Day, which is the 8th of May, Ascension Day, which varies, Whit Sunday, Whit Monday, there's a National Day on the 14th of July, Assumption of Mary, the 15th of August, All Saints Day on the 1st of November, Armistice Day on the 11th of November, and Christmas Day. For more information about Paris, you could visit uh, the Tourist Office website, which is uh, www.rendezvousfrance.com. And there is a uh, Paris Convention and Visitors Bureau, which is http colon slash slash en dot parisinfo.com. Or, of course, you can just listen to the rest of the show where I share some more information with you. Step into the spotlight with me, Lucy, every Wednesday between 6 and 7 p.m. on Seclo Sounds. I'll have new music, the latest entertainment news and interviews with local bands. If you're in a band or if you have music that you think I should be playing, I'd love to hear from you. Email me, lucy at seclosounds.org and join me every Wednesday from 6 till 7 for Spotlight on Seclo Sounds. You can contact us or just keep up to date with travel news at facebook.com slash Travel Show. Still to come, uh, the weekly travel news update. But at the moment I'm talking about Paris and sharing some general information about visiting the place. The closest I've ever been is going around the outskirts of my motorbike once for our honeymoon 21 years ago now. Uh, I haven't actually been, when you look at, uh, I've been a travel agent, I work in travel, and you look at where I have been and where I haven't been, Paris is a massive miss on the list of places to be, to have visited even. And I'm going to have to go there sooner or later. And when I was putting this information together for the Travel Magazine's article, which does made me think, yes, I have to go. It's only an hour or so away by flight. I can get there from Luton, which is only down the road. So I have to go. But if you've been to Paris, please do share your experiences at facebook.com slash John Gwyn Travel Show. And now I'm going to share a little bit of information, more information with you. So at the moment, I'm talking about Paris. As you know, dear listener, I do have trouble pronouncing words, so this could be interesting. It's really is far easier writing information and instead of talking it when you're uh, as bad as me when it comes to speaking out loud. But anyway, do bear with me. There's some great information for you to find out about Paris, so you may want to go and visit. Uh, there's no shortage of things to see and do in Paris, as you expect from a, a city. And as there's so much to see and do, it makes sense to get a tourist ticket. The Paris Pass covers public transport, sightseeing buses, uh, a river trip, along with entrance to some Paris museums and attractions. The Paris Museum Pass allows unlimited visits to 60 museums and sites in and around Paris. This is really for the serious museum visitor, as it to make it a bargain you need to visit at least three museums a day for each day that the pass is valid. But you can use the uh, pass at most of the museums. So monuments, uh, there's of course there's the Eiffel Tower, with more than 250 million people have visited the tower since its construction in 1889. And there goes my phone. And it's the most visited paid tournament in the world. The monument, not tournament, is the most paid monument in the world. It's the tallest structure in Paris and is the second tallest in France if you ignore broadcast uh, towers, aerial towers. And of course, as well as taking in the view, you can also eat at one of its two restaurants. Arc de Triomphe, it's uh, standing in the middle of the palace, place Charles de Gaulle at the west end end of the Champs-Élysées. This mon- monument commemorates the victories of France and honours those who died in battle. Beneath it lies the tomb of the unknown soldier from the First World War. There's the Palace of Versailles, uh, this famous symbol of absolute monarchy practised by the ancient regime. When it was originally built, in Versailles was a rural village. It's now a well-to-do suburb in Paris, 
and ran about 20 kilometres southwest of the city centre. It was a centre of French political power from 1862 until the French Revolution in 1789. Of course, there's museums, as I mentioned, the Museum Pass. There's the Louvre, which opened as a museum on the 10th of August, 1793, with an exhibit. It showed uh, 537 paintings, and the majority of the works were confiscated from uh, royal and church property. It's located on the right bank of the Seine, and it has nearly 35,000 objects, ranging from prehistory to present day, and it is the world's most visited museum. It is home to the best known, most visited and most written about, the most sung about, the most parodied work of art in the world, the Mona Lisa. What you may not realise is that uh, there's quite a few scientific uh, museums in Paris. The city designs is, and the industrial, I've kind of translated the title there, is the biggest science museum in Europe and is one of many culture centres of science, technology and industry that promotes science and science culture in France. Here attractions include a submarine, a planetarium, an IMAX theatre and there are also special areas for children and teenagers. Other places you can visit in Paris include the Notre Dame de Paris. Uh, Notre Dame is Our Lady in French and it is a reference to the Virgin Mary. Notre Dame Cathedral is one of the best examples of French Gothic architecture and it's thanks to the uh, Victor Hugo's The Hunch Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's one of the most recognised churches in the world. And as well as the famous bells there are uh, breathtaking views over central Paris and the river from the two towers. Paris is known as the city of love and it makes sense that uh, the Paris has the has a romantic cent uh, cemetery. The Pierre Lachance Cemetery is the final resting place for numerous French luminaries including authors, writers and musicians. It's also well known for its nightlife, it's Paris and uh, there's a few little places you can visit. The Bastille is probably left for the younger amongst you for party going. Uh, Bellevue is an up-and-coming area, as well as the birthplace of Edith Piaf. Oberkampf is an area still very popular that you may find it too overcrowded. And the place Vendome is not the cheapest area to spend the night, but it's a very it's the place to go to be seen and to see, or to be to see and be seen, whatever the way the phrase goes. Nightlife highlights include the Folle Berger which was the world's first music hall and home to uh, Josephine Baker. Originally used for operettas, comic operas and other live music, things changed in the 19th century when there was the arrival of nude women. I don't mean a load of new women came to the place and showed up, I mean on the stage, obviously. The Moulin Rouge, uh, which may be seen as a tourist trap, but the entertainment here is taken very seriously. The Doris girls have all had loads and years of training in formal dance before they even get to perform the can-can on the stage here. There's Harry's New York Bar. Apparently this is the bar where Gershwin composed an American in Paris and uh, Harry's New York Bar was first established over a hundred years ago. And finally for this section the Hotel Raphael Rooftop Bar. This Parisian rooftop bar is the one to visit for the uh, views but only during the summer months it's closed in the uh, winter and you have great views of the Eiffel Tower and the Arc de Triomphe. You're listening to the John Gwynn Travel Show on setclosesounds.org. I'm talking about Paris at the moment sharing some of the information I wrote for an article for a travel magazine. I've mentioned that there's plenty to see and do in Paris but how do you get around? Well, it's fairly easy and I'm going to go through the different ways of getting around Paris now. Of course, the first thing is the metro. There are over, well, there's around about 300 stations throughout Paris. And it means that most attractions are just a short walk from a metro station. It's open from 5 in the morning until half midnight. And tickets can be purchased at the ticket booth in the station. And there are options of a one day, two day, three day, five day. And another Paris ticket, the Paris Vist for tourists. 
For the longer stays in Paris, there are also weekly and monthly tickets called the Carte Orange. I, was, I guess they don't pronounce orange like orange like that, but you know what I mean. This ticket gives a traveller unlimited travel on the Paris Metro and bus network. You do need to plan ahead when getting one of these because you need a passport photo to get the uh, ticket. There's RER Trains, which is a rail network that has several stations in central Paris. And it can be more convenient than changing lines on the metro. For tra- some trips, you can actually use a metro ticket. And these trains can get you to and from the main airports and also Disneyland. Taxis uh, can be held in the street or you can use a taxi rank. The fares vary depending on the time or day of the week, whether you have luggage or whether you're, where you're picked up from and even if you're a group of four or more. There are minicabs as well, just like any other city, but these need to be booked in advance. You can't just grab them in the street. There's 59 bus routes in Paris and all reports say that this bus route is very good. And there's also the advantage of being above the ground so you can see some of the sites as well while you're getting from A to B. You can use metro station, uh, metro tickets, pay on the bus or use a ticket mach- ticketing machine at metro stations. If you buy the ticket on the bus, you cannot transfer onto another route. However, you can get a Carnet ticket called T Plus and that can be bought at metro stations and it allows you to transfer among bus routes from up to 90 minutes from the first, the start of the first trip. If that makes sense. I hope it does. Of course, with the river going through the centre, there's boats. You can get, uh, there's eight stops along the, the river, including the Champs Elysees, the Louvre, Eiffel Tower, and the Notre Dame, to name a few. To find out about the bus, the boat even, you can go to www.batobus.com. Cycling, you can get uh, maps of the bike routes from tourist office or from bike hire shops. You can hire cycles using a Velib program, which I guess is similar to the Boris bikes in London. You pick up free speed unisex bikes at stations or service points, which are scattered throughout Paris. And you pick up the bike from one station and you can return it to another. You don't have to take it back to where you got it from. Just remember to put it back somewhere. And payment is via bank or credit cards. And to find out more about that, it's http colon slash slash en dot V-E-L-I-B dot Paris dot F-R. Although you're a braver person than me if you want to cycle around any city centre, to be perfectly honest. And talking about being brave, or perhaps a bit daft, of course you can drive around Paris too, but like any major city, driving is a bad idea. A better option would be to leave the car at the edge of the city and use public transport to get into the centre. For example, if the hotel doesn't offer you parking, then on-street parking in the city can be difficult. And if you can find a space, you need to pay using a Paris cart, as the parking meters do not accept cash. So uh, I wouldn't drive to Paris if I were you. Well, that's the end of the Paris info for this week's show. I will be concluding the uh, travel advice and information for Paris on next week's show, so you have to make sure you come back to find out more about uh, visiting this city. You're listening to the John Gwynn Travel Show on seclosounds.org. Seclo Sounds exists to bring people and communities together to celebrate all that's best about the city of Milton Keynes. We produce a variety of music and speech programmes, and you've heard some of the promos in this show, and we're produced by local people and run by over 60 volunteers. However, there's always room for more, so if you have a program idea or a skill that you want to offer, please send us an email to volunteers at seclosounds.org. And of course, as we're all volunteers, we can't operate without the help from our partners, and one such partner is Interaction. Seclo Sounds is based at the old rec- rectory, which is the home of Interaction MK. They're bringing bringing arts to life in Milton Keynes for over 35 years. They use the arts to improve the life chances of disabled people and others in challenging circumstances through shared created activity. Their programmes help participants to develop creative, personal and social skills. To find out more, please visit them at www.interactionmk.org.uk. You're listening to the John Gwynn Travel Show on seclosounds.org. And now, travel news. <laughs> 